that I have been a liar and the truth is not in me. I am not the prophet. Warren Jeffs, president of the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or FLDS, is coming to light once again with Netflix's release of Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey. This four-part documentary series covers Warren Jeffs from when he first became the leader of FLDS up to his trial and arrest in 2011. This documentary deep dives into the lives of both Jeffs and the thousands of faithful followers he dangerously influenced over the years, including countless young women and children. Today we are talking about Warren Jeffs. Tomorrow you decide. Leave a comment below of who you want to see featured on the next episode of Where Are They Now? While you're down there, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you aren't already. Let's get into it. Warren Jeffs grew up in the extremist fundamentalist church known as FLDS, with his father, Rulon Jeffs, being president or prophet of the church. When Warren was 21, he became the principal of an FLDS private school and was known for being very strict about rules and a huge disciplinarian. Warren Jeffs became the leader or the prophet of the FLDS officially after his father's passing in 2002. At the time of his death, it was reported that Rulon had up to 65 wives. Within a week of his father's passing, Warren had married all of those women but two, with one refusal and one running away from the compound completely. An honorable choice considering her other option was marrying her late husband's son. After his father's passing, Warren took things into his own hands and that's when things began to go south. Now, the FLDS was not without its faults before, but when Warren came in control, he took things to the extreme. Since most of the members of the church were born into it, they truly believed that in order to make it to heaven, they had to follow everything that the prophet, Warren Jeffs, told them. He would decide who got married, how they dressed, and how they did their hair. One of the women in the documentary remembers Warren making them throw away all of their denim. The FLDS believed that a man needed at least three wives to get into heaven, and that the more wives and children he had, the closer to God he would be. Locals and reporters outside of the church knew that their beliefs and teachings were different, and there were definitely suspicions of the underage girls being married to the older men. However, without any proof or victims coming forward, authorities and reporters couldn't do anything. The members of the church kept to themselves and would never share what went on behind closed doors. Whether they knew what was going going on was bad or not, Warren had all the power and he wasn't afraid to use it. Just decided who married who within the church, no questions asked. There was one instance where Warren kicked out 20 men from the FLDS during a service. He then reassigned their wives and children to new men within the FLDS. People were becoming increasingly worried about their family's fates and had no idea that what Warren was doing wasn't okay. They just needed to pray and obey. That was until people decided to finally get out of the FLDS and come forward to speak out about Warren Jeffs, who famously told his followers to keep sweet no matter what. It was so hard for members to leave the church, especially women, because they had never worked, made any of their own money, or even had a proper education. But that didn't stop it from happening. In the early 2000s, Alyssa Wall, known at the time of the trial as Jane Doe 4 for her protection, came forward with the allegations that Warren had forced her to marry her 19-year-old first cousin Alan in 2001, with her being only 14 years old at the time. In the documentary, she talks about the consummation of her marriage and how with her lack of education, she was very blindsided. She felt uncomfortable with Alan and even went to Jeff's to try and get him to choose another husband for her before they even became married, with obviously no success. Alyssa agreed that Alan often harmed her and after suffering multiple miscarriages eventually left Alan and the FLDS completely. In June 2005, Warren Jeffs was charged in Mohave County, Arizona. Now this is YouTube so I can't say exactly what his charges were and I will be severely downplaying it, but you can find all of this info online if you want any of the specifics. He was charged charged with harming a minor, another version of harming a minor, and with conspiracy to commit harm to a minor. Now I need to give a little context on the location of all of this because this is where things really start to take off. So they have a location in Utah, that's where it all started, and then they moved to their other location in Arizona which is where he was charged. While this is all happening, Warren Jeffs has a massive temple 
being built in El Dorado, Texas. This temple was on what he called the Zion Ranch. Zion was supposedly taught to his followers as being heaven on earth. He would take children away from their parents in the middle of the night and bring them to live at Zion as chosen ones. You know, as churches do. But more on Zion later. After his charges in 2005, Warren Jeffs took off on the run from authorities. At this point, Jeffs was a very wanted man. The Arizona Attorney's General Office put out wanted posters offering a, a reward of $10,000 just for information that could lead to Warren's arrest. In October, his brother Seth was caught alone with over $100,000 cash, prepaid cards, and phones, but refused to say where Warren was. He got arrested arrested for suspicion of harboring a fugitive, which got him three years probation and a $2,500 fine. In April 2006, Utah issued an arrest warrant for Jeffs on felony charges, and he was soon after placed on the FBI's most wanted list. They were offering a reward of $60,000, which was quickly raised to $100,000. The public was even warned that he may be traveling with loyal and armed bodyguards. That doesn't seem very sweet to me, Warren. Finally, on August 28, 2006, Jeffs was pulled over on Interstate 15 in Clark County, Nevada by Officer Eddie Dutchover. The only reason Jeff's vehicle was pulled over and he was caught when he was, was due to the temporary license plates on his red Escalade not being visible. Warren was with one of his wives and brother Isaac. He was also said to have four computers, six cell phones, disguises including three wigs and 12 pairs of sunglasses. He also had over $55,000 in his possession at the time. In the documentary, they say that while Warren was on the run, his loyal followers were sending him tons of money that they did not have to help build Zion and to pay for all his adventures on the road. The temple that they built in Zion was actually where they located all of the files and records that proved the underage marriages and other crimes Warren had committed. This included tapes of Warren performing ceremonies with some of the girls in the temple. Warren Jeffs returned to Utah from Nevada and was faced with two first degree felony charges of accomplice harm. Each charge carries an intermediate penalty of five years to life in prison. We're not done here either, folks. Arizona prosecutors were up next to try Warren. He was held in Washington County Jail pending that previous trial of Alyssa and her cousin Alan. Jeffs continued to lead his followers from jail, having his wives visit and relay his information back to the people. In July 2007, Warren was accused in Arizona on eight counts. Again, it's YouTube, so I won't include the specific charges. Just know he's an evil, evil man. Warren's trial officially began September 11th, 2007 in Utah. On August 9th, 2011, Jeffs was sentenced to life in prison. Fitting, with the eligibility of parole on July 22nd, 2038, when he's about 83 years old. So where is he now? Well, since it's only 2022, Warren is still serving his time in prison where he belongs. Throughout his years in prison, he has had many solo hunger strikes and was even put into a medical coma from excessive fasting. In 2012, he predicted that the world would end before 2013 and told his followers to prepare. In 2019, he suffered a mental breakdown due to a woman coming forward with more allegations. Due to his poor health and lack of evidence, it didn't go anywhere. Current FLDS members still believe he is the prophet who speaks to God and continues to lead them from prison. They still believe he was wrongly convicted. Thank you so much for this episode of Where Are They Now? I was your host, Maddie. Make sure you subscribe for more and let us know who you wanna see next time.